Hello guys, in this video we will implement this animation where we transition the menu to back icon and vice versa in sync with the drawer. Now to understand some of the code written here, do check out my previous video where I've explained this in great detail and where we implemented this animation where the avatar and active items background animate in sync with the drawer. But for this video, I'm just gonna give you a little brief. So here we are mainly using menu controller from Ionic Core, which is by the way different from the menu controller that we import from Ionic slash Angular package and defined it in constructor and which only gives us access to some of the basic functions. But from this menu controller, we get access to some of the core functions that even the Ionic menu component uses under the hood. So from here, we're mainly using register animation to define our own drawer type and pass our own animations for the avatar and active items background. And inside this function, this is the default drawer animation, which is taken from official Ionic GitHub code. And we add our animation using add animation function, which we pass as the second param here. So as the default drawer animation plays out, it also manipulates our animations too. So this was a little brief of how the code works. Now for the menu button, we're currently using Ionic provided component ION menu button, which comes with some default styling and functionality, where it automatically toggles the drawer as we click on it, and we can't even change the icon. And currently it is defined separately on all these screens. So first thing we need to do is define it in a common place where we can access it and apply animations. So for that, let's copy the code for this and comment this out from here and inside the drawer component we're gonna have to wrap this completely inside a div because we want this menu to show commonly on all the screen so let's wrap this and close the div here and paste the code now our menu is showing but it is currently below the safe area so let's give it some margin top 40 pixel okay so our menu is showing and it is also working you can ignore this for now we're gonna handle this later now we can't really as far as I know animate this component as it is very limited so we're gonna have to create our own menu component which we can customize and sync with the drawer so for that, I'm going to use some open source pre-built menu animations from this site. Now here are a lot of different options and you can choose any one of these which you prefer. But for this video, I'm just going to use this one. So for that, let's look at the code. And this is the code for these animations. And this is the one that we are going to use. So... I'm just gonna copy and paste this code and see if it works. Now I have copy and pasted the code for the menu as you can see here but currently it is not functionable. So if you have problem understanding how to get the code for a correct menu just follow the comments here as according to this this is the code for close menu animation as you can see on the first row. So to get code for the arrow animation we have to scroll down a little bit and uh, for this one it would be back arrow 5 5 being the index here so let me expand this a little bit this is the code that you need to use and regarding css it's pretty much same you have to follow the comments and uh, it starts here and before this this is the common styling for all the elements here so you can copy this and after the comments you have to find back arrow 5 or whatever the animation that you want to use in our case it would be back arrow 5 and this is the code for this till here now if you look at the javascript code when we click on a menu class of element which is this div here it is toggling an open class which if you look at the css it is where the main animation takes place so what happens is when we click on it it adds the class and plays the animation and we click again it removes the class and it basically reverses the animation so 
this is the end effect let's try this in our code so for this i'm gonna create a click event and inside this we're gonna pass on menu click function that we're gonna initialize in the typescript file we also need to toggle the open class so for that we have to use a variable we can toggle the value of so for that let's create a variable is menu active with a default value of true and let's also initialize the function on menu click and inside this I'm gonna toggle the uh, variable that we just created so if it is true it will be false and if it is false it will change it to true we also want to make sure that when we click on this button it toggles the drawer so it open and closes the drawer so for that we can use menu controllers toggle function where we pass the menu ID which we define in the menu component here let's save it now to toggle the open class we can use ng class and inside this we're gonna pass the class we want to apply the condition on and we can apply the condition of if is menu active is true the class will be applied and when it is false it will be removed kind of the same condition that takes place here let's save this here and let's check okay so our animation is working and it also toggling the drawer now we can remove this old menu button from here and currently uh, it is showing in the middle because of this CSS property of margin 50 pixel okay so it is showing pretty much in the correct position we can we're gonna fix this later and uh, it is also kind of playing the animation and toggling the drawer so the next step is I'm gonna customize some of the CSS property for this element so that it matches our applications UI just gonna change some style width background and uh, the animation values etc so I'm gonna be right back so I have customized the CSS for the menu just tweak some properties size width color etc and also gave it a margin top of safe area top so that it doesn't show below the safe area and uh, align with our header so now it looks more like part of our application now just to give you a little brief of how the animation works uh, we're mainly animating three elements here the icon line one and line three so icon element is the container that contains all the three lines that you see here and uh, the other two are line one and line three because line two doesn't really change its uh, size or position it just stays the same we're only changing the topmost line and bottom line to form an arrow so these are the three elements that we're gonna animate so for the icon we are rotating it by 180 degree and when we rotate it it also rotates all three lines with it and uh, for the line one we're basically applying three uh, properties a scale rotate and translate uh, 3d which is specify the x and y position so it basically scale it down to decrease the width and rotate it by 45 degree and specify the x and y position so that it align perfectly to form an arrow and we're doing basically the same thing in line 3 scaling it down rotating it by minus 45 degree opposite of line 1 and specify the x and y position so that it align and perfectly form an arrow so this is kind of how the animation works and what we need to do is implement the same animation programmatically so for that we're gonna have to get rid of this because we're gonna do all these things programmatically so let's remove this and uh, we also don't need this variable here so we can commit this out and commit this out from here okay now 
to animate this menu we're gonna have to access it in the typescript file and for that we need to give it an id so we're gonna give this element an id of menu icon we're giving this one an id because this is the container and from this we can access all the child elements so we want to animate icon line 1 and line 3 so we can access that using this element and we also need to translate x this whole menu component by the drawer width so when we open the drawer this element will shift here so that it looks more like a part of the screen that's why we're giving this one an id and uh, in the typescript file we're gonna define the reference for this and this is the syntax for that we're gonna name it menu icon ref now the next thing is we need to implement similar kind of code uh, for the menu as we did for the avatar and active items background as you can see here so for that let's create a variable menu element now let's create the animation for the icon element so for that let's create a variable icon anim create the animation using create animation function add the element and here we're using this variable query selector function so we're using query selector and passing the class name for the child element so we can get the reference for this and apply our animation and the next is from to where we specify the property that we want to animate let me split it so that you can see this side by side so we basically want to animate these three first one is icon and here the property we want to animate is transform so it takes three params first is the property second is the starting position and third is the end position so property is transform the starting position is translate x and y minus 50 percent because if you see here when we apply the animation this is the ending position where it rotates so starting position would be zero degree and uh, this is the ending position and it, this is the starting position and for the ending position we're gonna pass this one now to clarify the starting and ending position here it, the default position is when the drawer is closed so it will show as a menu it means this open class is not applied right now and end position would be when it is completely transformed to back arrow icon and translate at this position so this would be the end position the second property we want to apply the animation on is line one so let's create a variable line one anim create the animation using create animation add the element same thing uh, menu element query selector and pass the class for the element which is menu underscore line dash one from to specify the property we want to animate which is transform starting position which would be of course uh, this is the ending position so starting position would be zero 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 and rotate zero degree and scale 1.0 so this is the starting position and ending position is the same that we have specified here when the menu is completely transformed to the back icon so let's repeat the same thing for the line 3 and in this case the class would be menu underscore line dash dash 3 and the ending position would be what we have specified here for the line 3 now these three are currently separate animation so we're going to combine them into a single variable and uh, for that let's create a variable menu icon anim create the animation add the element and now the element we're applying the animation on which is the whole complete container so here we're going to add all of these three animations which would be icon anim line one anim and line 3 animation the next thing is 
to pass this down in this function so that it uh, add the animation here and uh, sync it with the drawer so let's pass it and let's check if it is working okay so our animation is working and as you can see it is perfectly transforming from menu to back icon and vice versa but currently there's still an issue that it is stuck in this position so we want it to translate to its final position which would be around here so that it looks more like a part of the screen for that we have to apply the translate x animation and we're gonna apply this in this complete container where we have defined the id so for that we have to add the animation here and same thing uh, from to specify the property we want to animate which is transform starting position would be zero pixel which is of course when the drawer is completely closed and ending position would be translate x drawers with pixel and we have this variable here calculating the width of the drawer here and passing it down in the component so we are passing it in this animation so that it translate by the width of the drawer and uh, show above the screen so let's see okay so now when we play the animation it is translating together with the drawer and it is working perfectly now you can if you want to comment this out or remove this part of the CSS from here because we're not really using it and we don't need this anymore so let's also check this on Android so our animation on Android is also working but if you notice there is one issue that on iOS the animation is playing clockwise but on by the top but on Android the animation is playing anti-clockwise by the bottom so this is kind of an issue with Android or we can say Chrome and this is the sort of an explanation that I found on the internet so the solution to work around this is instead of giving it exact value of 180 degree we're gonna have to change it to a floating point which could be any number after the point and it will now work and now it is working exact as iOS sort of a weird issue or solution but this is how you can work around this so I guess that's pretty much it about icon transition animation in Ionic 6 in sync with the drawer so I hope you like the video and I'll see you in the next video thank you for watching hello guys now if you notice the android and ios version of the application in ios our application content renders behind the status bar or the safe area but on android we see this status bar with a black background and our application content renders below it now we can set a white background for the status bar but we want this kind of an effect so that our content shows behind like in the case of ios now we can also do that in android by setting the overlay property but then we're gonna have to handle the UI for this so that our important content like the header doesn't show behind the status bar but below it. We're handling that in the iOS by using the CSS safe area variables that Ionic provides. But these doesn't work on Android. And as far as my research is concerned, there is no simple way to get a status bar height in Ionic for Android. And the status bar library also doesn't provide it. So the only solution that I was left with was to get it through the native code. So in the next video, we're going to learn how we can communicate between Ionic and platform's native code to use some of the native functionalities, which in our case is getting the height of status bar. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.